Hello and welcome to this video on section 3.2, the fallacies of relevance. In this video I'm going to cover the first eight fallacies of relevance. Let's start with uh, defining <clears throat> the fallacies of relevance. Basically what happens in the fallacies of relevance is that the premises are logically irrelevant to the conclusion. So what happens here is that the premises may look psychologically relevant. Uh, there may be some manipulation, misuse of language, manipulative language to, that is used to, to try to prove a conclusion, but there is no logical relevance between the premises and the conclusion. Remember that fallacies are mistakes in reasoning. In general, there are mistakes in reasoning, and that with informal fallacies, we're going to have to look at at, at, the, at the content, we're going to have to look at the language that is being used. Well, if there is language that is threatening or that appeals to people, then that is logically irrelevant, as we'll see um, to the conclusion. Okay, so the first one here is appeal to force. Appeal to force involves the use of some kind of threat or harm, threat of harm, uh, and that can either be physical uh, harm or psychological harm. Um, to make someone believe a conclusion. So remember that the person is trying to convince someone of a specific conclusion, um, except here they use basically force or threat that something bad is going to happen if they don't believe a certain conclusion. The Latin name, by the way, is argumentum ad baculum, uh, which means uh, argument based on the stick uh, or, or appealing to the stick. Um, ba baculum is, um, is derived from bacillus, which means stick and a stick is something that you beat someone with, right? So the Latin name might be helpful there in, in, in remembering what the fallacy means. Okay, here's an example. Mary, I know that you will not support the new sexual harassment policy. You know that I can decrease or withhold your bonus. So there's a kind of a psychological threat here, right? There's no physical threat, um, but there's a kind of a, a, a psychological threat here uh, that, that the employer here is given giving to Mary and the conclusion that she's supposed to believe is that she's not going to support um, the sexual harassment policy. Okay, so that's appeal to force. Um, the, the, the premise here, by the way, is logically irrelevant to the conclusion. It is true that the employer can withhold the bonus or, or decrease the bonus, but that is totally logically irrelevant as to whether she should support the harassment policy, and that's why it's, it's a fallacy of relevance. Okay, the second one here is appeal to pity. This one is committed when a person attempts to make another person or a group of people feel sorry for them, basically by evoking pity. Uh, so again, evoking pity, making someone feel sorry for you, is logically irrelevant to whatever conclusion you're trying to prove. If you're trying to prove a conclusion, there should be good logical reasons for that, for why that conclusion would follow. And making someone feel sorry or uh, have pity on you is logically irrelevant. Here's an example. Officer, I know I was speeding, but I have I have had a very bad day. My pet goldfish died this morning, and I was also laid off from my work. I know you will not give me a speeding ticket. Okay, so this uh, person is obviously trying to evoke pity from the officer. Uh, they admit to speeding, um, but the reasons that they give as to why they should not get a ticket are logically irrelevant. Um, right to, to, to what's going on here. Um, so again, um, making someone feel sorry for you uh, is, is, is basically to commit a fallacy because um, how they feel should not factor into what the logical conclusion should be. Okay, so our next one is um, appeal to the people. Uh, we're only gonna do the bandwagon approach. There are three variations in the textbook. You only have to worry about the bandwagon approach. So this one occurs when the person who commits the fallacy appeals to the popularity of something. The popularity can be the popularity of a point of view. It could be the popularity of a product. Um, it could be the popularity of anything. But basically the, the point here is that they are appealing to that popularity, uh, talking about that popularity to try to prove their point. Um, here's an example. You should buy the latest Toshiba laptop everyone is buying it. So the conclusion that we are to believe here is that we should buy the latest Toshiba laptop. The reason that they give is that everyone is buying it, right? Well, again, whether everyone is buying it or not is logically 
completely irrelevant as to whether it's a good product or not right many times people buy products that are bad just because they're popular so being popular doesn't say that a product is necessarily good and the bigger point here is that if something is popular an opinion or a point of view it doesn't mean that it's the right opinion again those considerations are logically irrelevant uh, to the conclusion right um, and that's why this is uh, a fallacy of relevance okay the last one that we're doing in this video is argument against the person and uh, again your textbook has um, three variations you only have to worry about the ad hominem abusive variation um, so ad hominem literally means to the man it's it's from latin to the man or to the person and so with ad hominem abusive the person attacks uh, another person verbally uh, instead of addressing the argument uh, or perhaps the issue that that other person has made so there is verbal abuse, verbal attack. Sometimes it's a character attack, uh, but without really good reason to attack the character. And basically, um, we are supposed to believe their conclusion based on the, on the attack that they've given of that person. So here's an example. Tom has argue, argued for stem cell research, but did you know that he is a heavy drinker and his IQ is very low? He barely graduated from high school. Why should we listen to him? Okay, so the person committing the fallacy here has focused on uh, Tom and his, 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 his low IQ and his drinking um, as a way to attack him, right? And also the fact that he barely graduated from high school as a way to attack Tom instead of addressing the argument that Tom gave for stem cell research, they are attacking him. So that is ad hominem abusive. Um, these things may very well be true about Tom but they are logically irrelevant to the argument that he has made. If the person here had not committed a fallacy, they would have uh, looked at the argument that Tom gave. Uh, that would have been relevant, right? Like, even, even if these things are true about Tom, it is possible that he, he gave a very good argument uh, for stem cell research. And so the person, in order to not commit a fallacy here, would have to have had look at those reasons rather than attacking Tom. Okay, so that's our last fallacy for this video. In our next video, we're going to do the last four fallacies of relevance. Um, and hopefully the examples here are helpful uh, because when you do your homework, you're going to have to recognize them. So you're also going to be looking at examples in your homework, and you're basically going to be naming the fallacy that you see. So the, pay very close attention to the examples here because that's, that's how you're going to be tested um, in the quiz and then also in the final exam.